If you're looking for a website or domain, then check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. Hello again everyone, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Back in September, I published this video tackling Bart Siebel's film, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, specifically around his claims that Apollo 11 and the other moon landing flights never actually left low Earth orbit, that they'd faked all of the moon surface footage in a studio on Earth, then got into a rocket, launched into low Earth orbit, did the broadcasts from there that were supposedly done going to and from the moon before deorbiting and returning to Earth. And the video I did pulled apart several aspects of Bart's claims to show how they couldn't have actually been in low Earth orbit, as well as showing footage from other broadcasts that directly contradicted Bart's claims. However, there was one specific claim Bart made that I didn't directly address in the video, and many people keep bringing it up as apparent proof that they faked it all that we supposedly see them remove a cutout fitted to the window that was there to make the Earth look smaller. Here they remove part of the crescent insert. Finally, the iris is opened up and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. Now, I only sort of address this indirectly via the other points, because all of the points combined show that this can't have been in low Earth orbit, and so there would be no need for a cutout in the window. But it seems like people who want to believe Bart's claims don't have any direct explanation for all of the other points I raised, so instead they just ignore them and bring up something else. It would be kind of like if they asked me, why is Squarespace sponsoring this video? If I didn't have an answer, I might be inclined to just ignore the question and start talking about something else, rather than tell you about all of the amazing features that it offers for people wanting to build a website, such as the really intuitive controls for designing and customizing websites with things like photo galleries, or the hundreds of design templates that you can pick from to begin with, the ability to add an online store to present your goods and services, as well as take online payments through, or you can set up an online schedule to show your availability and allow customers to easily book in with you, or send out marketing emails to all of your subscribers with just the click of a button, and use the extensive analytics section to see how your website traffic is performing. So see how Squarespace can improve your business today with a completely free trial by using my link in the description down below, and if you use the code Dave McKeegan at checkout, you'll receive 10% off your first purchase. So first, let's establish what Bart's claims are. Though the federal government would have you believe that this is a view of Earth from a distance out of the spacecraft's window as it nears the moon, it is not. What they have ingeniously done is placed the camera at the back of the spacecraft and centered the lens on a circular window in the foreground, outside of which it is completely filled with the Earth in low orbit. So he's saying that Apollo 11 wasn't really 100,000 miles away viewing the entire Earth from a distance, but was instead orbiting only a few hundred miles away, and that at that distance the Earth would fill the window, so to make the Earth look the correct size for the broadcast, they put an insert over the window with a circular cutout so that they could only see part of the Earth through it. Now, as I alluded to in my other video, that idea does not match what we see in the broadcast. In low Earth orbit, they'd be completing one full orbit about every 90 minutes, and the Apollo 11 broadcast was viewing the Earth through the window constantly for over 10 minutes. The craft should have covered a ground distance of about 1,500 miles. The Earth that we see in the broadcast doesn't change. We can see exactly what this would look like thanks to the Apollo 9 EVA involving Russell Swigart recording from outside the lunar module whilst looking at Dave Scott who was standing in the command module hatchway. The command module hatch is pushed open so through its circular window we are seeing a prolonged view of Earth in low Earth orbit and the clouds are whizzing by within just a few seconds. Nothing like what we see in Apollo 11, which keeps the same visible clouds for over 10 minutes. Not only that, but when they return to viewing the window at the end of the broadcast, which was about 30 minutes after it started, 
In that time, the clouds of Earth still haven't drastically changed. Although they have changed a little bit, which debunks the idea that it's just a static image of Earth. Now, that alone dispels the whole idea that we're viewing the Earth through a cutout. And if we were looking through a cutout, then our view of Earth would shift as the camera moves around due to parallax. Just like how if you were to look out of a window from across a room and then you move yourself around, the view that you see through the window changes. But instead, we only ever see one constant look of Earth, even when we can clearly see the camera is moving. Another major problem with Bart's claim, though, is the perspective that we see, or rather that we don't see. In the footage, officially at least, the broadcast starts with them having the camera near to the command module window zoomed in on Earth. We then see them zoom out, which makes the Earth get smaller, and then they back the camera away across the to the other side of the craft so that they can get a view of the interior. And this is where we see the cabin light come into view. Bart's version of events, though, is that they were never near the window to begin with. The window has a cover over it with a circular cutout. The camera is already on the opposite side of the craft, but is zoomed in onto the cutout to make the Earth look big. And then they zoom the camera out, which is where the cabin light comes into view. However, if that were the case, and the camera was already on the opposite side of the craft to begin with, then the reason the cabin light comes into view would be because they are zooming the lens out, which means that the Earth should be getting smaller in the window at the same time. Because in reality, the Earth is getting smaller because the lens is zooming out, but they've zoomed the lens out before the cabin light comes into view. The only reason the cabin light comes into view is because they've backed the camera away, which means the camera must have been closer to the window at some point. However, people seem to be being drawn in by Bart's claims that we supposedly see them remove the cutout and that it gives us a view of Earth. Here they remove part of the crescent insert. Finally, the iris is opened up and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. Now, for starters, his film makes out that they didn't realise that they were recording. This is a segment that they believed wasn't even being recorded, much less suitable for broadcast, for the lens was being zoomed out and the scene was being changed to that of an interior of the astronauts at work and apparently the stop button popped back up on the recorder without notice. Which is nonsense, because the camera didn't have a record button. Cameras always view when they're powered on. You only have a record button when you want the camera itself to be storing the information about what it is seeing. But that would require the camera itself to be saving the video onto its own medium, like a memory card or videotape but the Apollo TV cameras didn't have those. When the cameras were active, the feed from them was being passed through a cable to the transmitters in the command module, which transmitted the feed out and was picked up by receiving stations on Earth. The receiving stations were continuously recording all of the raw data feeds that they received, and all of the transmissions were routed through to Houston, who were constantly monitoring them. The astronauts didn't pick and choose which bits were being recorded. If Houston could see their feed, it was being recorded before they actually saw it. And you can hear in the original broadcast, Houston discussing with the astronauts what they're seeing on the monitors. On 11, Houston uh, appears to us that uh, we're seeing a view from outside, plus a little of the, uh, of the inside. It appears you've taken the camera away from the left window. Now, over. So the astronauts knew their camera feed was being transmitted, so there's no way they could think it wasn't being recorded. But let's get back to the idea that there's a cutout in place. The film states that they zoom the camera out, then they remove the cutout from the window, and then the lens iris is opened up. For the lens was being zoomed out, and the scene was being changed to that of an interior of the astronauts at work. Here they remove part of the crescent insert, Finally, the iris is opened up and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. That moment, we have two light sources in the frame. 
the earth shine coming through the window and the cabin light. Now the cabin bulb will be putting out a constant amount of light. So the only way that the apparent brightness of that bulb can change is by changing the settings on the camera, i.e. the lens aperture. So when we see the bulb getting brighter, it's because the aperture on the camera is being opened up to allow more light to pass through the lens, which means everything in the frame gets brighter because the camera is able to see more light, which is why Michael Collins then becomes visible. So the window getting brighter at that moment isn't due to a cutout being removed, it's because the camera aperture is being opened. You can see the same thing here on Earth. If you stand across a room from a window and you set your camera settings to be able to see outside clearly, then inside the room will look pitch black because there's just proportionally much more light outside than inside. If you then change your camera settings to expose correctly for inside the room, the window will just become a bright white spot. But that does not mean that the sun is directly outside the window. So it can't be said that the bright light coming through the window at that moment is the view of Earth because the brightening is being caused by the aperture opening. If the brightening of the window was being caused by a cutout being removed, then we should be able to see the Earth clearly in the window at the same brightness as before. Removing a cutout from a window would have allowed more light overall into the command module, but it wouldn't have caused the Earth to appear any brighter itself. If I place a cutout over my window and I set the exposure setting so that I can see outside is correctly exposed and I then remove the cutout, the bit of the window that we were already seeing doesn't get any brighter. It's just that we're able to see more of the view outside the window at the same brightness. The view outside will only get brighter when I change the camera settings. So either the cutout was removed at the exact same moment in time that the aperture was being opened, except we can see that when the aperture is opened, there's nobody near the window. Collins is in the middle seat facing the camera. The window is way more than an arm's length behind him, so he couldn't reach it. And we can just see Buzz to the side of Collins even further away from the window. But Bart accepts that they're in the command module in space. Furthermore, it is apparent they are in genuine zero gravity aboard the actual spacecraft, necessary to convince the mass media of their authenticity, just not any further than Earth orbit, as you will see. But if the cutout were removed before the aperture was opened, we would see two things. Firstly, the cabin would appear to get a bit brighter, given that the apparent cutout would have to be very small in comparison to the size of the window. Removing that much blockage from a window would significantly increase how much light was getting into the cabin. Like how if you have your curtains mostly drawn but leaving a small gap, some light will get through into the room but the room will look quite dark. When you fully open the curtains, the room gets much brighter. But we see no change in the brightness of anything in the cabin until the aperture starts to get opened, which we can verify by the fact that the bulb is also getting brighter at the same time. Removing a cover from a window doesn't change the brightness of a light bulb. And secondly, just as we've covered, the Earth would be filling the window at the same brightness as earlier. Except right up until just before the whole image brightens up, we catch a glimpse of a tiny Earth that is still the same size as it was before when they first zoomed the camera out. We never actually see a large Earth. We only ever see a small Earth and then a bright window. Confirmation bias just takes care of the rest for conspiracy theorists. In fact, despite us not being able to see the window at the exact moment that the aperture opens up, we can do a direct comparison of immediately before we lose sight of the Earth versus immediately after we see the window again. And aligning the cabin light up, the Earth still overlays in the window as you'd expect because the camera lens hasn't been zoomed, you can see the Earth's actually quite sizable compared to the window. And as the aperture opens up, the glow of the cabin light increases significantly. So really what we're actually seeing here is just the glow of Earth becoming so bright that we now can't see any detail of it. Again, no actual view of Earth is visible because we can't see any detail of Earth. We go straight from seeing a small Earth through the window to seeing a bright blue glow of Earth shine on the window. 
The idea of a cutout in the window whilst in low Earth orbit simply does not fit with what we're seeing in the broadcast. Anyway, now that we've addressed that, that's probably going to conclude this video. Thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring it. If you've enjoyed it and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.